How's everybody today? Kind of missed you all. Great to see everybody. Um, I think you all know and have pretty much got the updates that, you know, we signed three players today to letters of intent, and um, that brings to 27, you know, the total number of guys that we signed, you know, in this class, 24 early and three more right now. Um, this is accumulation. I think this day is an accumulation of a lot of hard work by a lot of people. Uh, I think, first of all, our assistant coaches um, do an outstanding job of going out early and evaluating players so that we identify the players that we really want to zero in on uh, that fit the criteria for what we're looking for from a character standpoint, uh, from a size and speed standpoint, from a critical factor standpoint to play their position. And then, you know, we team recruit here at Alabama, and I think we have a, an outstanding team, you know, of people. Uh, our administration, Dr. Bell, uh, is very supportive. Uh, the faculty, the university community is very helpful uh, in terms of, um, you know, selling to these players uh, what they need to know about uh, their academic program and what their academic interest is and how they're going to develop careers off the field. Um, you know, Greg Byrne is always involved in uh, each weekend um, in terms of the support that we get and how he sets the table to give us the things that we need to have a chance to be successful. And then all the people in the athletic department and program who work so hard uh, together as a team uh, with the assistant coaches to try to develop the kind of relationships with these young men that uh, give us the best opportunity to um, get them here, whether it's you know, in the academic support program, John Deaver and his staff, or, you know, our nutritionist, Miss Amy, our, our medical staff, uh, Jeff Allen and his group, uh, Scott Cochran in the strength and conditioning program. So um, there's just a lot of people, whether they're deans of colleges or uh, whoever it is, who really add to uh, making a weekend here something that is informative for a young man and his family so that they see the value that we try to create you know, for a, a, a player when they come to the University of Alabama and their personal development, their academic support, their career development, and how we would help develop them as football players. So um, we've identified um, what our needs are on both sides of the ball. Um, you don't always get all the people. Uh, you don't always satisfy all the needs, but we were really fortunate this year to uh, satisfy a lot of the needs that we have uh, having 15 early enrollees you know that are here right now um, is going to um, really be helpful uh, to their development and uh, to how they can contribute to our team next year um, I think it's easier for those guys to get um, socially and academically sort of acclimated to um, the university uh, because they don't have as much time commitment in football uh, and it certainly is the learning curve for them is a lot better uh, in terms of the time that they have to learn what they can do to try to contribute to the team next year. Now, I think it's also important that um, you know our fans, our alumni, the people who support the program create the atmosphere and environment on game day that uh, these young people see when they visit around here is you know, really important that, um, you know, players want to be a part of that kind of spirit, that kind of tradition. And uh, I think, you know, our alumni, our fans, and our supporters certainly do uh, an outstanding job of that. Uh, I know that everybody likes to talk about how your class is ranked, how your class is rated, uh, and, and all those types of things. And uh, I think we're, you know, excited and very fortunate to uh, I have the kind of class, the number of quality student athletes that we have in this class, um, and what those guys can contribute to sort of helping us continue to have a successful program here, both on and off the field. Um, but the, op the opportunity that they have as individuals is outstanding, and the relationships that we want to develop with them to help them grow and develop as people, students, as players is instrumental. But I think our focus is always on you know, development with players. And, um, you, you know, we want them to focus on what they have to do to be complete players at their position uh, and, you know, believe the truth about what they have to do to improve, um, how they can prepare themselves so that they can go out and create value for themselves when they do get an opportunity to play. Um, because everything 
is going to be performance-based in their future. Uh, so that's what we want to help them do, continue to grow and develop so that they can perform well when they get the opportunities. Um, you know, if you really wanted to evaluate a, a, a recruiting class, I guess if you looked a couple years down the road and said, well, how many of those guys really developed into being something uh, that they were sort of, you, you know, thought that they could be, uh, that would be a much truer um, evaluation of, of a class. But um, we certainly uh, feel fortunate that we're able to attract the, the quality of people. Um, we certainly satisfied, you know, we, we wanted to recruit a lot of linemen in this class and to get five offensive linemen and six defensive linemen was probably a really good thing. Uh, felt like five defensive backs was a really good thing uh, for us. Um, you know, a couple running backs to replace the guys that, you know, we lost this year. Um, so, um, you know, a couple young quarterbacks to try to develop to see if they can create some competition at that position. So there's a lot of good things in this class. Okay, Coach, we'll start in the back left with Cecil. Coach, um, addressing today's signees, or at least um, one from out of state, um, Ishmael Sopcher really seemed to face a lot of pressure, he and his family, to stay closer to home. What did you see from, from Ishmael and his family during the recruiting process that sort of made you feel like they, I'm sure you anticipated it, what made you feel like they could stand up to that? Well, I think a lot of these guys uh, that are from out of state, you know, get that kind of, you know, pressure. But, um, you know, I, I think that I was really proud of, of Ish for um, we challenged him uh, and he accepted the challenge. We challenged him to come here and create value and compete against really good competition, uh, which is going to make him a better player. Uh, make him a better person. Uh, he have a much better chance to be successful, uh, develop a career off the field, develop a career on the field, play at the next level. Um, and you know he accepted the challenge. And um, you know I think if you ask a lot of our players that have played here in the past, you know one of the things that they always refer to that made them better was, you know the competition every day in practice and how they got challenged. And uh, and I think that's one of the things that. Um, really struck a chord, you know, with him and his family both. Um, so um, we're happy to have him, and I think he can be a really good player for us. You had a lot of new uh, coaches recruiting familiar players that are with your program. Just how do you think those new assistants did in such a quick turnaround uh, out on the recruiting trail? Well, I, I think that mostly what we did in January was um, really about um, next year's recruiting. Uh, the 2020 class, um, you know, basically two of the three guys that we signed today were committed to us before. Uh, so the coaches did a really good job of keeping those guys in the fold. Uh, I do think there was probably a player or two out there that uh, because of the relationship change uh, from the coach that was recruiting them to the new coach um, may, may have been, you know, a little bit of a problem for them. Uh, because those relationships are really, really important. And um, look, we, we're really happy with the staff and the guys that we have. We have a lot of good recruiters. I think we have a lot of good coaches, uh, a lot of new energy and enthusiasm uh, with those guys. But uh, I think the one thing when you have change in staff that can be a bit of an issue is if you're still recruiting guys, um, that the relationship change is you know, it's a short period of time relative to how long you recruit guys in this day and age um, for them to develop the kind of relationships that they feel comfortable with. We're going to the middle of Michael. Yeah, with the new guys, you guys have been enrolled already. Uh, Alfano has gotten a lot of uh, attention. Uh, he seems like he's had a pretty big year. Uh, what have you seen from him? What do you know about what he's been able to do? Since well, we really haven't seen anything uh, from him. I mean, Coach Cochran has worked with him in the weight room. We're teaching the, the, the guys the off-season program this week, all the new guys in the program. So next week when we start off-season program, they'll know what to do. But uh, I've had, you know, several meetings with the young players. Um, you know, we like his work ethic. Um, he obviously has been a very productive uh, player. We like his size. Um, what we've seen of him in high school is the same thing you've seen of him. And, you know, again, we're going to focus on his development, and hopefully he's someone who can help us, you know, early on. We're going to need some depth in the defensive line, and um, I think we have three of the young players here now, and we'll have three more in the fall or in the summer. So um, 
it's good to have those guys here to work with, but I haven't seen him do anything physically when I can make a comment on anything that he's done. You mentioned taking most of the last month to recruit guys in the 2020 class. Is that a big change for you from previous years around this time of year? Well, I don't think there's any question about it. I think that when you know we made this early signing date, uh, there was a lot of us that made the statement that this would become the signing date, the early signing date. Uh, and I think as you saw the number of players percentage-wise go up that signed early this year versus those that waited. Um, I think that's sort of coming true. So that's changing the recruiting calendar in terms of how rapidly you have to recruit guys. It, all already, it also changes the um, what, what do you do in January. Uh, if we're only recruiting a handful of guys, which we may have been recruiting eight or ten guys, you know, to get three or four guys. Um, you know, you're spending most of your time going around looking at juniors. Uh, looking at next year's class. Uh, so this has become a little bit more like spring recruiting, uh, even though you can't evaluate the players other than in the weight room if you see them lifting weights because they're not in spring practice at this time for the most part. But it has changed the dynamics of what you do in January. It's also changed the dynamic of what you do in December uh, because now everything's sandwiched into a short period of time. Uh, you got more to do. You play in the SEC championship game, you lose one third of the time you have to recruit in December. Then you have two weeks where you can recruit. Then you're getting ready for a game and it's signing date. And you're out there practicing the same day at signing date. So it's changed all those dynamics as well. When taking stock of the offseason, did you look through it through the prism of what happened against Clemson? And how did, um, and is there a danger of maybe taking too much stock uh, from one result? Oh, I, I don't think so. I mean, you know, to me, um, you know, we kind of had the Alabama factor around here uh, that has always helped us be successful. Uh, that's having a team that plays with a lot of discipline. It's having a team that um, everybody sort of is responsible and accountable to do their job at a high level and a standard, and everybody puts the team first. All right, so that's the standard. Um, and it's up to the individual players on the team to do that. Uh, and if I thought that we weren't doing that in one game or ten games, I would address it with the players uh, and make sure that everybody was on board, you know, with those principles and values that's helped us be successful. So, um, and I, I don't, I don't think we played in that game like, you know, with with the Alabama factor. Uh, so everybody needs to understand that and respond to it. You know, um, if you lose your humility, uh, it's. Um, sort of creates, um, I'm above doing things the way I need to do them to prepare for a game and go play in a game against good competition. And if I put my own agenda uh, ahead of the team or winning, uh, it's going to have some effect on my performance. So um, you know, if I think those things are existing in the program, I think that they need to be addressed. So um, and they have been. You mentioned the weight room earlier today. Antonio Alfano said he had gained 17 pounds since he got here. Uh, where do you see him playing on the defensive line? Do you, is, he, is he a guy that you'd like to move inside or, or, or stay on the end? Well, we recruit him as a defensive end, and that's all I know about him, like I said before. So, you know, I didn't even know he gained 17 pounds. I guess we ought to have a staff meeting with you guys so I can get information on what's happening in our program. But I appreciate it. Nick, were, were there any positions that you were targeting today that obviously didn't come through? Uh, and could you be on the lookout, whether through the transfer portal or other places, for to fill some of those needs? Well, I think the big thing, uh, you know, we recruited one tight end. Uh, the fact that um, you know Hale was a senior and Irv went out already for the draft. Um, you know, if, if we saw some opportunity to get a more seasoned player out there at that position, um, maybe that's something that we'd look at. Um, you know, I, I think that uh, we're constantly going to have our eyes peeled for anybody that could help us have a better team. Um, and 
But I think when you're looking at these kind of guys, whether they're graduate transfers or whatever, you know, for their sake and for yours, they have to be able to come in and contribute. They need to go someplace where they can play, uh, and uh, we need for them to play. So we have to have a need for them, and uh, they have to be the standard that we're looking for. But uh, we're always going to have our eyes peeled for anybody that can help us improve our, our roster. All right, well, thanks for everybody. I really appreciate it. And thanks all for, to all the people out there that really helped us have a successful recruiting class. I mentioned a bunch of them, but there's a lot of people responsible for it. And we, we appreciate that more than you know. So thank you.